the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Good morning to you. The place for weekly entertaining car talk. Just ahead, Paint House Potentate, Randy Borcherding. <laughs> Conrad has the popular This Week in Auto History, and we'll get you updated on the stories making car news this week. Howdy, along with Mike out of This World Mars. King Conrad DeLong, we need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us today. Let's get right to it. Randy Borcherding is supposed to be uh, over there at Paint House. Well, he is, but uh, I'm trying to get him to go to a sideways. landscape. Yeah, he's he's kind of whacked out. There he is. Is okay. that better? Much better. Well, welcome right. to the show. Hey, guys. How are y'all? We're good. You? No, we're not. Well, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm going to uh, lie uh, to you. We're not good. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are better than others. Yeah. So I understand you just got back from a trip. I did. We got back from a trip and visiting the sun before he deploys and off off to wherever. And uh, just got done painting a car this morning. Wow. Is that, that the uh, still got the Corvette in the booth? Yes, sir. Is that the one with the Viking blood or whatever it was? Don't touch it. There it is. Wow. And what I'll did you call it? And you called it Viking Blood? Yeah, that's the name of that one. <laughs> I, I figured we had enough Randy Apples in the world. Nah, you never have too many Randy Apples. So you also uh, talked about um, doing a, uh, what, what did you call it? Um, a polymerization protection coating on it. Explain well, explain that. But, uh, AKA clear coat. Oh, <laughs> Duh. <laughs> well, it just sounds more technical. It though. does. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well, are stretching you, are, my vocabulary muscles. Are you, are you, have you just gotten out of or going into the paint booth? Uh, just literally finished 20 minutes ago. Really? What There's a lot of fume still floating around in there. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, well, I don't smell them anymore, so who cares? <laughs> It's good. Well, one those, good thing about COVID, huh? Yeah, those those brain cells are just uh, shooting out the front door. <laughs> uh, what's left? What's left of them? <laughs> yes. So, uh, how many coats of color will you apply? In the case of this project, uh, there's a black sealer, four coats of the color, and five coats of clear. Wow. Okay. And then if, if it was to be measured, how many mils thick would that be? I don't I don't know. I've been doing paint millages. Um, I think you're about a mil and a half to two mils per coat of clear uh, when it's dry. So 10 probably. Oh, wow. Okay. And, it, and we sand a lot of that off when we color sand and buff the paint which is why you put so many more layers of clear we on put, to give you room to see you know, put a hundred dollars on and take fifty dollars off or however you want to look at it but it sure looks pretty well it's it's the the heater just turned off so i can walk you in here it's uh now the fun begins which is the sanding and the polishing but we let it dry for a while first how long do you let it dry as long as possible, at the risk of sounding sarcastic, but I'd say at minimum a couple of weeks. Oh my! Do you you and you don't leave it in the paint booth for a couple of weeks, do you? No, okay. no. In fact, this is coming out today, and I will come back this afternoon and paint the hood, the uh, the the deck cover that goes right here, and a few of the other small things, and then it'll be done. Well, paint wise, it'll be done. Boy, that sure is a beautiful oh, color. Yeah. Kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'd love to see it when it gets out in the sun. You could use it on your pedicure color. Kind yeah, of, ooh, it, toenails. It's it's a pretty color, and the nice thing about it is it looks like a candy, but it's not. Hmm. Oh, it's not? Really? It's it's what we call a two-stage finish, just a base coat, clear coat. I'll show you the... Uh, now, is that color this, your creation? Yes. Oh, this is one of our customers. So this is the valve covers and intake manifold that will go on a modern LS7 uh, fuel-injected engine. So color-coordinated a little bit. How do you not paint the ribs on the valve covers? Masking tape. That's all? Yeah. And you just trim the masking tape to exactly just the top of that? Yeah, we'll, we'll lay masking tape along each rib and then when the paint's wet i pull it back off 
And then we'll come back and sand it and polish the ribs anyway, but at least you don't have a lot of material to remove. That's beautiful. So it's almost like a pinstriping tape yeah. or what we used it, to. It is. It is. The, those ribs are an eighth inch wide and you use an eighth inch wide tape. Well, it works. Uh, so you lucky have to trim you. it or nothing. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. sweet. Yeah. And then what's the uh, planned powertrain? I know you said LS based, but how big and what are we doing? It's, what are you doing with the powertrain? The modern LS7 came in the ZR1 vets, I think. Um, I'll show you a picture of the engine here. That's the engine. It's got a modern drive, you know, drive on it, drive system. All those painted parts will sit on top of that. And then it gets a five-speed Tremec behind it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so it's it's all modernized stuff, but in a classic shell, so to speak. And is this? I'm assuming this also has somebody else's chassis. It has a chassis from a company called Street Shop. They're in Alabama. We've done another vet with their chassis. It's a nice chassis. Um, we've got a 69 vet here that will have an Art Morrison chassis, or does have an Art Morrison chassis. And then we've got the 64 that's in the other building that is a factory chassis, but with just bolt-on upgraded control arms and um, sway bars, that kind of stuff. What made you go with this uh, chassis company out of Alabama as opposed to an Art Morrison? Uh, This car we just painted, the one you just saw, was wrecked. And it already had that chassis in it. Okay. But it had to be replaced. The, it was wrecked to the point that the frame was bent. Oh, wow. And you would assume, presume, that that would total the car. But in this case, the car has such a value that it did not. And had you heard of or worked with this chassis company previously uh, before yes. this vehicle? Okay. Yeah, we did, a, we did a 63 Roadster Corvette. A few years back, and it also had a street shop chassis in it. Uh, the customer and I selected it back then, and we had a good experience with it. So it's a good it's a good piece of hardware, as are Roadster Shop and Morrison and oh, yeah, some yeah, of the yeah, others. Yeah. They're all making great stuff. Now, does this uh, street shop I'll chassis show company do they do they normally just do uh, older model type uh, cars, or if you want a, a custom chassis on a on a new C7? Uh, would they have those in stock as well? No. They just do retro chassis. Gotcha. Things that fit the C1s, C2s. I don't think they're doing a C3 yet, which would be the 68 and up. Yep. Um, where Morrison is, Roadster Shop is. So um, I believe Street Shop's just in in the older body styles. When, when they build a chassis, uh, are they – custom built just for for instance this one that's under that car uh, is it built by order they don't really have a, a shelf full of them do they no it's built to order and all of these chassis companies are built to order they they don't inventory them now do you and, go, do you go and pick up the chassis or do you have it shipped to you it depends in this case i went and delivered it and picked it up on the on the the 67 the 69 art morrison chassis we just had shipped to us it depends. If I can squeeze in a road trip, I will. But I just <laughs> I couldn't do it for the '69. Randy, when they, when they ship a chassis, how do they do it? Do they box it up or just put it on uh, skids or what? It's crated, uh, you know, palletized and, and got a crate built around it. Gotcha. Like I've been at Morrison's place, and they've got a complete, you know, division just um, m- devoted to crating and packaging the things they ship. So when you order, let's say on this uh, on this um, sixty eight, when you order the chassis, do you tell them, "Here's the engine I'm using. Here's the rear end componentry I'm using. Here's the suspension componentry I'm using," and they build the adjustments into the chassis for you, or do you get the chassis and you have to build your adjustments to fit their chassis? Well, I don't know what you mean by adjustments, but the hardware, for example. Uh, the coilovers, the differential. Like here, here's the front of the Morrison in the '69. So that's a standardized cradle that they make, and we can specify what 
coilover we want, or they have a standard one, what brakes we want. Um, okay, so you, you give them the order of how everything hangs on the chassis or, or the componentry that's put on the chassis. Well, that's pretty. <clears throat> and in the case of this one, this is the first one they've done for C3. So um, uh, we we helped them develop it, measuring and pictures and all that. And, and this is the first one they've had in a C3 that's a production chassis. They've done custom ones in the past. But now when you order a C3 chassis for your 72 Corvette, it will be based on what this one started out as. So this one's we, kind of the starting point, yeah. Yeah, we learned a few things. They've adjusted a few things, and we knew that was part of the process. Well, must, be nice the end, to, must be nice to be so connected to be involved in their R&D. Well, it, it is. They've become good friends, and sadly, I, I, you guys may be aware of this, Craig Morrison, Art Morrison's son, Craig was very instrumentally with good friend of mine passed away last year from COVID. I remember, um, uh, you know, 46 years old and it just got him. So nonetheless, yeah, we, we've, we've remained a, have a relationship with them and they're just, they're, they're more friends than they are vendors at well, this cool. point. So what's the planned powertrain for the, uh, 68, uh, an LS three built, to look retro like a small block Chevy, almost like a, maybe an LT1 would have looked back in the day. Oh, cool. Carburetor you know, and all? Well, it'll be fuel injected, but look like a carburetor. It'll have an air cleaner on it. It'll be painted orange, black engine bay. It'll be very retro, maybe. even though the body is customized with the wide fenders. And uh, But it's going to be reminiscent of a 70s IMSA car or something of that realm when they had the big fat fenders on them and what color we don't know yet I i'm trying to get the owner to go in a direction that i think would be good so the, uh, the, the john greenwood look with the flowing american flags down the side I, of it I, i'll show you here 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 are some renderings i don't know if they show well on your side oh yeah but different colors different interior colors there's two blues a, a gold a green and then this ro kind of royal blue with a very dark brown, almost espresso interior. I'm leaning towards the dark blue with the espresso interior. Well, that's why that's the biggest picture. <laughs> but I like the gold and the green because they're different. So do you draw um, these? No. These were done by a gentleman named Eric Brockmeyer. He, he does a lot of our renderings. Another fellow named Tavis Highlander did this El Camino we're working on. So we have different sources for that when we need it. So when when they draw these, is this you sitting down with them, giving them your view of, of it, and then kind of some rough photographs of the body so they get the body contours correct as well? Um, it's usually just a phone call or, or an email. You know, they're, they're very in tune to the industry, and, you know, we all speak the same language, yeah. so to speak. And you just kind of give them an outline of what you're looking for or a picture, you know, two or three pictures for ideas. And, and they begin the process. This this uh, switch screens again here, this 55 is not the final rendering, but that's where we started. So you got to right. start somewhere and right. started modifying it, adding, subtracting. And that's uh, way cheaper to do it in a computer than in person. on the car. And how many vehicles do you have? say in process right now in the shop uh, in the shop and counting off at an upholstery shop six okay we've got one that's almost done with upholstery and one we just got back from upholstery that's in the other shop and uh any plans to paint the fire truck <laughs> oh <laughs> i hope not <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> that thing that thing is a blast and it works. It all works. And I don't, I don't and, get to do with it yet, but it's awfully cool. And where is Chicota? Uh, it's in North, no, Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. it is Chicota in Oklahoma. I was figuring it was somewhere else. It was a uh, walk you over. I don't know if I'm going to lose the signal or not. But there it is. And it was a working truck up till like six months ago. And now you just ride it around the neighborhood late at night to wake the neighbors up. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> does it have? Does the siren work on it? It all works. It all works. Everything works. And and it drives. They drove it back. They bought it in Brenham and drove it home. And the plan for it? They have a sod business, uh, two ninety grass, and they thought it'd be fun to water the grass they put down with a fire oh, truck. That's cool. That's neat. Why not? <laughs> that so, sounds great. That actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Is it is it a tanker? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's got a tank. Uh, it's got the pump on it, all that stuff. Well, gee whiz, you could you know fill it with beer. <laughs> we could do that. I was, was going to say you could go out and fight a fire and then uh, water the grass when you're done. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Well, you know, it's, uh, huh? Go ahead. No, I was just finishing a sentence. Go ahead. No, I, I was. I wanted to go back to the chassis, if you don't mind. You said that that C3 that you're working on, that was the first of, uh, I guess, uh, a lifetime of C3s that now that that company is going to turn out. So yes. did you ship the body over there? How did they make tweaks on uh, getting everything just right to fit underneath the C3 without the body? Uh, the short answer is no, we did not. What? Uh, was good about these cars from C2 to C3. So from the red vet you saw in the booth to this primary 69 from the, in front of the back wheels forward, it's the same car uh, mechanically dimensionally um, from the, the back wheel area kind of behind the seats there, the frames a little different. And we just had to do some measuring. They already knew what works on a C2 and with our measurements, we modified the rear section, and it almost fit like a glove. We had to modify a little bit, but they made some tweaks to their formula, and the next one shouldn't have to have the mods. That is amazing. So to it was me. really kind it of is. transitioning an existing C2, making the changes to make the C3, and that'll be, I mean, if they're the only ones out there selling a C3 full chassis, they'll be out ahead of the whole crowd. Well, the there are others. Uh, Roadster Shop has one. Um, there's a couple other smaller companies. I don't recall their names at the moment, but th- this won't be the only one. It just will have the Art Morrison name, you know, approval and, and level of fit and finish and performance, which can't be denied. They drive wonderfully. Well, and uh, it, it'll be interesting. We'll have three Corvettes in the shop, one with a Morrison, one with Street Shop, and the third one with a modified original chassis and to see how each of them drives. Well, let, let me guess. <laughs> let, me, let me volunteer to give you the opinion. Yeah. yeah. It won't be the original chassis that, uh, <laughs> that, that tops the cake. Yeah, I hear you. That, that would be my guess as well, but it's always a fun experiment to compare and contrast when you get the chance. Well, you know, I owned, believe it or not, way back when I was a teenager, a, a C3 corvette not really but i owned a yeah. c3 corvette and uh it had absolutely no horsepower and um, compared was it? Late- i'm sorry say again late 70s <laughs> yeah 77 to be precise uh, <laughs> gutless wonder. i hate to say it, but those were terrible cars thank you and uh, i'm just going to say you know as much as i would have liked to have said oh man that thing handled great it did not it was okay no. But to, you know, a custom chassis or to today's standards of a Corvette, oh, it can't even hold a key. And when I see a, a, a 70, any of those C3 Corvettes, that's all I can think of is like, oh, dear God, why would somebody sink all that money in there? Now, clearly, the one that you have there is going to be a full custom. Indeed. And I think the C3s are cool right up until they got rid of the chrome bumpers. Yep. So it was at 73 and then 74 uh, they did the back as I think well. 73. Yeah. 73, 74 I think was a half and half with a chrome front and a plastic rear. And then Somewhere the bubble, in that. And then the bubble back window in yeah. 78. Once, yeah, 78. Once got replaced. I just don't have a lot of passion for them anymore. Yeah. Well, I I will say that that the <laughs> the C3 just uh, it was based on the Mako Shark and as far as the yeah. body is concerned, sexy body. Love the body. Yeah. But yeah, the absolutely. car itself is an actual rolling 
car. Opus. And they sold a ton of them back then. Well, I, the sales I bought numbers one. Were, were pretty but high. I, I remember reading an article way back when that back then in the mid 70s, the Corvette weighed more than a half ton Chevy truck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it wow. doesn't surprise me. Yeah. It wasn't all that. I was proud of it. It was brand new, and it was the latest, greatest thing when I bought it in 76. Yeah. Ordered it from the factory. And, uh, and matter of fact, when I ordered the car, they did not mention in the order that you could have a side view mirror option. Instead of the big, long chrome mirrors, you could get yeah. the compact ones. And, and of course, you know, sport mirror. once that, uh, once that car came out and, uh, I saw the, the sport mirrors, if you want to call them that, then I. I thought I've got to have those. Get those ugly chrome yeah. things off of there, and uh, so I took it to a dealer out that I bought it from, and they hacked up with a sawzall the inside of the door to make these. It was stupidest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Had I taken the door panel off to see what they'd done inside, I'd have had them give me a brand new car. Yeah, because the outside looked yeah. good. The inside yeah. was like layers and layers. Oh, of it was just it was just glass. awful what they did. But yeah, those kind of things hopefully don't happen anymore. Uh, but we see, see a lot of that in these old cars when they come in to get worked on, haven't been touched in a long time. It's amazing how things were done or not done back back then. Yeah. This, I could have done a better job, and believe me, I'm not good with anything, much less a sawzall. <laughs> but this was just a hack job all the way. But yeah. at, at any rate, well, Randy, it's yeah. always great to talk to you, my friend. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your day and, and uh, working your paint job around us in this broadcast. We appreciate it. You're welcome, guys. Thanks for having me. It's Thank always you. fun to see what you got in the garage. Oh yeah, appreciate tell, it. Tell Jen we said hi, and we'll talk to you later. All right, man. Take Thank care. You, Thank Bye-bye. you. Thank you. The proprietor of Paint Shop, paint Randy house. Borcheting. I'm sorry, Paint House. I'm talking about shops here. Anyway, this week in auto history. Ready? No. Nope. Yep. All right. Let's Hit see. it. Mars is ready here. We don't worry about so, that. You just go right ahead. In, in 1903, Alexander Winton drove his Winton Bullet to set a land speed record at Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, the car was built in 1902. It was called the Bullet One. He drove a measured mile over at over 65 miles an hour in 1901. Wow. And his first automobile race was at Daytona, held a year earlier, when Winton and his Bullet tied <laughs> Ransom E. Oldsmobile. That didn't quite come out right. <laughs> tied Ransom Oldsmobile in the Oldsmobile Pirate. At 57 miles an hour, and then a year later, he got another 10 miles Winton an hour. Winton and his bullet. Winton Winton's and his bullet. bullet. His, mm-hmm. In 1908 <laughs> in England, a standardization test. You're way ahead of me here, Morris. I'm backed up. A standardization test was held in England, and three random Cadillacs uh, were chosen and disassembled put in a pile, and all three of them were reassembled, proving the concept of interchangeability of parts to build one vehicle for mass production. Uh, the, the three 1907 Model K Cadillacs used in the test uh, won the Dewar Trophy by the Royal Automobile Club of England. Very prestigious. Yep. Oh, extremely. You know, and that was some of where standard of the world came from. In 1919, in Oregon, they became the first state to impose a 1% gas tax. Uh, the collected funds were used for road construction, and that was just the start of the government taking all of your money and sending it someplace that it really doesn't go, but you feel good about it. Is that in the script? <laughs> no. In uh, 1948, the Federal Trade Commission uh, issued a restraining order preventing Willie's Overland Company uh, from claiming that they had developed the Jeep. Willie's Overland Company did, in fact, end up producing the Army vehicle that came to be known as Jeep, but it was originally uh, designed by Bantam Motor Company. And if you look at the picture of this, I noticed in the original Bantam, it doesn't have a seven-slot seven grill. 
It's got a whole lot more yeah, slots. And then I guess as time evolved, it changed to the seven slot grill. In 1992, Earl Scheib, the founder of the specialized repainting and collision repair company, passed away. Um, he founded the company in Los Angeles in 1937, and it grew quickly during World War II. And by 1975, had 75 branches across Germany and England, not even counting all of them in the United States. Paint your car for 1995. Uh-huh. And... He was a busy place. I wonder if Randy would do that for us. In 1995, with a few extra zeros behind it. (laughs) And then in 2008, uh, Boyd Leon Coddington uh, of the American Hot Rod TV show passed away from complications with diabetes. Mm -hmm. What a jerk. I I, I say, but I I, I had met him. I had met him at a NASCAR oh, event God. where he was the Grand Marshal uh, up in Dallas, Fort Worth, and he was hanging out in the Chevy tent. And you are at dead on correct. What an ass! Yeah, you, you know, and when you're that way, it just ruins all of the things that you've worked Your for. For all, yeah, yeah. It, yeah he should have never he, gone on television. Yeah, just the way he treated people. Was, oh my God, just it's awful. And you look at what came out of Coddington's <laughs> shop. And now so many of the shows today is that a lot of those people have a history with, yep. with they've, Coddington. They've filtered into other parts right. of the, of the, the uh, industry. Industry. You know, because I think Foose came out of the Coddington shop. Yep. Um, a, Poor guy. Well, not really. I mean, I think he's doing no, really, quite well for himself. Really, because you think what he had to go through working for that jerk. Well, yeah, but I, I think he feels much more accomplished today than he did back then. And if you yeah. do have a comment about Coddington, send it to Mike Mars. No, send it to info at In Wheel Time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Time now for a quick break. We'll be right back. You're on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Saturday, March 19th, 2022 is the premiere of the all-new Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise In, and you're invited. Tailpipes and Tacos kicks off a new seasonal format, and first up is the Spring Cruise In at the Loopy Tortilla in Katy, 8 to 11 a.m., Saturday, March 19th. Tailpipes and Tacos will award trophies for the best hot rod, best classic, and best modern classic, so make plans now. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's coolest cruise in, and this is where you'll enjoy seeing the best hot rods, show cars, classics, and resto mods, along with Loopy Tortilla breakfast tacos and adult beverages. There's no entry fee, and all cars will automatically compete for custom Loopy trophies and other prizes. It all happens at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10. Get your ride ready for the all-new Spring Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, March 19th. It's going to be a huge car show, and spectators are welcome. The in Will Time Car Talk Show will be there, too. Let's celebrate the arrival of spring and the return of tailpipes and tacos saturday morning march 19th 8 to 11 a.m at the loopy tortilla in katie we'll see you then weather permitting is your business or company looking to stand out in a crowded advertising market looking to reach the real auto enthusiast you found it you're listening or watching in real time and so are your fellow enthusiasts The In Wheel Time Car Show now reaches half a million, and we can put together a marketing plan that will engage them in your product, business, or service. To get the tires rolling, just shoot us an email to our marketing director, Jeff Zekin. His address is jeff at inwheeltime.com. If you're in charge of your company's small, medium, or large business anywhere in the U.S., let the On Hold Company help you retain customers and promote your business on your telephone system. Promote special sales or company info when placed on hold. The On Hold Company provides custom on hold messages with professional male or female voices, licensed background music with no long term contract, no monthly recurring bill, and updates your messages as needed. Call the On Hold Company at 713 223 Hold or go to onhold.net. 